Hey, welcome to session three. Today we'll be looking at the foundation of worth. Our key verse comes from John 15, 13. No one has a greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. So before we get into it, let's play a game called What It's Worth. So let's go to our computer here and let's see some of the things that we've been looking at. And I want to show you a couple of things. And I want you, before I show you the price, I want you to think, how much does it cost? All right. So here, the first one they have is the new 2021 Ford Bronco First Edition four door. It's unbelievable. Have you seen these things? You got any guesses? This particular one comes in at $63,500. Next, let's jump over to Amazon and let's see here. There's some crazy things that you can buy on there. And one of the crazy things that I found is a container home on Amazon. Does anybody have any idea what that price is? So right now you can go to Amazon and you can buy a container home for $36,000. It's crazy. But not only that, but you can buy this. This, uh, this is very interesting and most people are probably dying to get this but this is actually something you can go and get today 1500 live ladybugs any guesses 1500 folks that's a lot guess what 21.99 unbelievable right in 2016 the environmental protection agency estimated the worth of a human being as 10 million dollars the word worth, according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, as, is as a monetary value for the value of something measured by its qualities or by the esteem in which it is held. The world has many standards of measuring worth, but they're not how God has defined our worth. Jesus has declared us worthy and valued because of his love for us. We are worth so much to Jesus that he was willing to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus' love for us gives us worth. Jesus' love for us also means that he's still working in us. We are his work in progress. And the fact that Jesus chose to die on the cross for our sins is proof that he loved us and that we have great worth to him. Okay. Now find the book of Matthew in your Bibles and turn to chapter 26. Jesus' death on the cross was soon approaching, and in today's Bible passage, we will see how he prepared to be obedient and to follow his Father's purpose for him. Matthew 26, beginning in verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Jesus and the disciples had just taken part in the Passover, and they had eaten their last meal together. Jesus shared the first Lord's Supper with the group. And from the upper room where they ate together, Jesus and the disciples went to the Mount of Olives to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus knew that there was a plot against him and that he was about to be betrayed by one of his own, Judas, and that Peter would deny him too. He realized that the time had come for his mission to be fulfilled. Jesus went to the garden because he needed to retreat from the crowd and to spend time with God in prayer, pouring out his heart to God. Okay, I want you to think about for a minute how you spend your time. 160 hours a week, and let's say you average seven hours a day of sleep. Now that leaves you with 119 hours of awake time. What do you spend the most time doing? How much time do you spend on God things, such as attending church, praying, reading your Bible? Now, according to Common Sense Media, teens spend an average of nine hours a day online. So how does your screen time compare? Prayer is a two-way communication with God. We talk to God and we listen. Prayer is how we have a relationship with God and we learn more about Him and gain wisdom and direction for life. Jesus did not go alone to the garden. 
he took Peter, James, and John with him. Jesus showed his humanity in the previous verses. He experienced deep agony. He was burdened by the world's sin, and he knew that he faced death by the crucifixion on the cross. Now let's keep reading Matthew 26, 39 through 41. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus prayed to God as he faced death on the cross. He asked if there was any other way so he didn't have to die on the cross. Again, this showed Jesus' humanity as God's Son who came to earth. He knew his mission was to die on the cross for the sins of the world when he came. But as a human, he knew what he faced was going to be very tough. So when Jesus asked Peter to stay awake and pray to avoid temptation, the temptation that Peter may have been facing was to deny Jesus. When we are facing temptation, it would benefit us to stay connected to God in prayer. Okay, let's read Matthew 26, 42 through 46. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. At times, we may have to wait for God's answer to be revealed, but in the meantime, we must submit to God's sovereignty and will for our lives by trusting in Him. But what did Jesus know to be God's will through His time in prayer? He knew this was not passing, and that the time was near, and that He was about to be betrayed. Jesus resolved to totally submit to the will of the Father. And even though the disciples fell short by falling asleep over and over again, Jesus loved them and he died for them. And despite their failing, he continued to work in their lives. I want to hold up a dollar bill. It's all I had. But it's a dollar bill. So what's it worth? It's worth a dollar. Well, what if I do this? Now what's it worth? How do you know it's real? Will it spin the same way as it would before? The bill did not lose its value, and neither do we to the Lord. He loves and values us despite what we have or have not done. We have much worth in His eyes. The cross is proof. Jesus would not have gone through this agonizing death if that were not the case. He said, I'm, I'm going. The thing is, I don't know when I'll be back. It was like getting in a plane in the New Testament and getting off the plane in the Old Testament. It was like I had flown into hell. And he said, Nick, they eat little missionaries like you for lunch. I stepped out of the plane and it was like you could taste darkness. It just became open hunting season. And on this one day in August, they killed four of my best friends. You don't think about things like this for your children. There was a feeling of um, that everything in my body had gone to my stomach. The looks that you get from people is, if you hadn't taken your son to Africa, he'd still be alive.
was a very, very difficult time because believers in Somalia, 1991, there were about 150 of them. And by 1997, only four were left alive. That's, uh, that's crucifixion almost without resurrection. And that's why we left Somalia so broken as we watched a whole generation of believers wiped out. How can you stand crucifixion without resurrection? And I vowed unto God that part of the brokenness of Somalia would not be wasted. Those deaths, that blood would not be wasted. And we would find ways to prepare ourselves and others to go to the Somalis of the world without making the mistakes that caused the deaths of believers prematurely. We need to go to places of persecution Go to where believers not have survived, but have thrived in persecution. He said, if while I'm in prison, I hear that my wife and children are hung to death, rather than deny Jesus, I will be the most proud man in prison. And what believers in persecution say, we are so thankful that we have the honor to suffer with Jesus. What would you call that? Would you call that sanity? Would you call that the American dream? I would call that the insanity of God. And when the Bible becomes present active tense, Not only is God out of the box, there's no box. It's burnt. It's ashes. pounds. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Folks, I always wanted to do that. Uh, but anyway, let's fix this microphone real quick. Well, hey there, folks. Just looking over my notes from our construction side here. I got to looking at my notes here and uh, today's day three. Today's the foundation of worth. Let me tell you a little something about worth. There's a lot of things in life that we treasure and that we like the most, but I want to show you something here that means a lot to me. Yep, that's my hammer. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to you, but it's kind of dirty and muddy and got some good old scratches on it, but it didn't change its worth. It still beats the heck out of a nail, I'll tell you what, like it right there. Uh, you know, a lot of it is what you see in it and, and what you look at it and you can look here at it like that. people say well it ain't that ain't nothing at all but to me it's mine right that's my hammer well you see there's a lot of things in life out here you might be wondering yeah hey, I wouldn't give you a dime for that but some people be willing to give their whole life for it you know what I'm saying I don't know that I die for my hammer but I come real close you know what I mean <laughs> all right but look here folks that's all I got to say about today, but I, I want to leave you with some really wise words that will help you realize that you are worth a whole lot. All right.
if you ain't broke, fix it. No. If you don't, if you don't break it, don't fix it. No. Um, it takes a long way to get there. <laughs> no. Living on love. Take it easy. Now, what about uh, if you don't make a shot, you don't hit it. Keep doing what you're doing until you do it, and then stop. If you keep trying, you'll fail. No, that ain't it either. Don't stop believing. If you take all the shots and nobody else can shoot, where there's a Will, there's a Carl. <laughs> Will and Carl are twins. <laughs> Look here, folks, it doesn't matter how much fun you have. Nobody has more fun than people. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Hey friends, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget, we're doing it again tomorrow at two o'clock. And if you missed it, go to calvaryvbs.com or our YouTube channel. We'll see you later.